Hi there guys, um, well here I am at the uh, end of the, the second week and uh, I've started to think, um, obviously I know um, in my mind the sort of things that, you know, what I'm doing and things like that which <laughs> scary place to be. Um, but I think, you know, I did, although I alluded to this in, uh, in the introduction, um, I think the rationale behind what I've chosen to do really revolves around the fact that at the end of the day bushcraft and outdoor stuff and things, it's such a massive topic. You know, what do you pick and where and when? You know, and what I thought was if, if, if I try and structure it in the way that I'm doing, go back to some, some pretty basic stuff, you know, and relearn that basic stuff. But not just go back to it and do it once. Not just go back and do it so I can do it. But go back and do it until I'm actually improving at it, better at it, good at it, work, you know, whatever level I get to. Yeah. Um, so that's that's been the idea. So like the first week with the fire steels, you know, I started with something pretty much I knew. It's also given me a chance um, to try different things. You know, like I've said, I think I think I did say through the week a couple of times when I'm doing things. I'm sure we've all seen on the telly where you've got something like you know bear grills or remies or whoever. You know, out in the jungle, right, lighting a fire with a piece of rubber. And I think, oh yeah, I can do that. I've got a piece of rubber in my, uh, you know. Have you ever done it? If you're carrying an emergency kit, is the fire lighting gear in it? And if there is, have you ever used it? Do you know it's going to work? Do you know how to use it? If you go walking somewhere and you carry two or three sorts of fire lighting equipment, you know, lighter, matches, ferro rod, you know, magnesium block, whatever, can you use them all? What's the point of taking two or three different types of fire lighting gear if some of the ones that you've got won't light the things, like if it won't light your stove? Um, or won't like, you know, it's like carrying half a pound of rubber if all you've got is a ferro rod because you're not going to light that rubber with a ferro rod. You know, realistically, you need a lighter works the best after that, matches, you know. So, you know, you've got to say, like, you know, if, if you're carrying a flint and steel as a backup fire lighting kit, that's not going to be, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the ass trying to light your gas cooker with a flint and steel if your gas, if your piezo runs out or the gas runs out. You know, so it's just getting into my mind clear about what things will do what. How good am I with, um, like, the first week making feather sticks? And as I showed, I think, very early on uh, this week, um, I showed very, very early on how even what I'd class previously when I was doing a bit more often, what I would have classed as a very poor feather stick went up like that with a match. So I know if I've got matches and a lighter with me that are in good order, I don't have to spend ages doing really really fine feather sticks I now I now know I can whack something off you know get it down to even just you know thinner than match stick which is really very relatively easy to do even with an axe or a prang I can get a fire going you know so and this week learning the different things I now know I've, I'd never lit my um, meth stove before with a ferro rod never even tried you know um, so some of the different timbers I'm trying over here you know for um, breaking up bark or you know scraping wood things like that like I've tried this week I've never done them before so really that's what it's about it's actually doing the things not just once but doing them a few times finding out what works finding out what doesn't work and as the week goes on building on things I've just seen this week again doing a feather stick but doing it fine enough that it will light with a ferro rod you might not always need that it might be that you've got all the means but you might get then your matches might be wet and you want to light a fire so can you do a, a a feather stick fine enough to light with your ferro rod unless you do it and do it more than once and do it so that you know you can do it whenever you want to do it with different types of wood different tools you've got it's not you don't own that skill I think I believe that's a, a term I've seen I think it was Dave Canterbury I believe and he, he coined the phrase unless you can do a particular skill anytime anywhere any place with anything you've got within reason you don't own that skill it's just something you know of so I suppose that sums up why I'm doing and I'm building up and you'll see over the next few weeks how you know the skills get fine you know finer skills I'm going to do different sorts of carving type things different skills learn learn new things and it's about learning new things as well so that's where this is at so anyway I will shut up now and I will get on showing you what went off this week so enjoy I hope I enjoyed doing it hi there guys um, Right, when it comes to uh, fire steels, one of the big things you've got to make sure is that if your fire steel doesn't do what I'm going to show you next, it's not working. So what I have is my neck knife, made by me. And 
ferrocerium rod. No idea where the rod came from, the handle and the attachments and everything else came from me. But here we are, I will walk outside. So it might go dark a bit, but I'm going to try and make sure you can see I've got, I'm not, there's no swapping over going on. I'm going to bob you down here. And there's no cutting and swapping, so you won't see any fading in or out. And if your rod, I will stand up here, so I'm standing at the side. If your rod doesn't do this, Then either, here we go, back into the house, back into the daylight. I've been waiting for the dark to do that. It's good fun, it's like Guy Fawkes night. Oh, oh. Bob and bits down. But, sometimes the rods come of different qualities. I think I've never actually found one that didn't work. Just some are easier and some are harder. And I think it's something to do with the content of, the, of what's in them. I'm not exactly sure. But um, some of the cheap ones have a lot more iron in them, so they last longer. So if you if you see a rod saying, oh, it will last for 5,000 sparks, it's probably going to be a bit harder to use than the softer ones, but the softer ones will wear out a lot quicker. In, real, in realism, it doesn't matter how, how fast it's going to wear out. They actually corrode as well. Once you've taken the coating off, and they corrode. So you might as well crack on and bloody use them, because they're going to corrode if you don't. The other two elements, over the three elements, and there's often three elements in a lot of things, like fire. Fuel, air, heat. Same thing with this. Your ferrocerium rod, your striker, and your abilities. So if you can't do what I've just shown you, which is stand up, shower sparks, and have those sparks still glowing and bouncing around on the floor, then either your technique is wrong, or what you're using to strike the sparks is wrong. Um, that's not saying you've got to have one of these. Obviously you don't. But... Before you discount the actual ferrocerium rod, make sure it's not the striker that's at fault. Because often it's the striker. Mine work. Because they're hardened and tempered, you know, the heat treat is correct. So if you're going to use a knife to strike them, you've got to make sure you've got a good 90 degree spine and a good hard steel to do it. Or the tool that actually comes with them, make sure you know how to use a particular tool that comes with them. And they're getting a lot better as time goes on. And the other is your technique. But anyway, we'll lead on to that shortly. So with that, on to the leading on bit. Right, hi there guys. Day one um, of this week's um, practice. And uh, I suppose my first question will be, how many times have you watched and seen on the telly all the, uh, you know, the bus crafters and all the rest of it, and same on YouTube, um, lighting things and thought, oh yeah, oh yeah, easy. Oh, that's great. That's easy. I can do that. Yeah, everybody. Uh, and in reality, how often have you ever practiced these things? When was the last time you actually tried to light a piece of rubber to light a fire, like you often show them in the jungles and things like that on wet environments? You know, how many different tinders do you actually carry, or are you aware of? What have you ever actually tried to light and seen whether it's easy or hard? Have you ever tried different ways of lighting your feather sticks? So that's what this is about. So it's actually, it should be, hopefully, really pretty blooming quick. Um, but it's the same thing as I've done um, like last week. What I'll actually be doing is using this to practice techniques and practice things that I've done and practice things that I will be seeing and learning and studying and, you know, researching through the week, different techniques, different techniques of using the ferro rod or lighting things or whatever else. Um, it's all practice into doing those things. So it's practicing using whatever fire lighting technique you're going to use are you actually confident it will work? So when you actually go somewhere, how much is that little niggle in the back of your mind going, oh yeah, it always works on the telly, but will it work for me? This is how you find out. Give it a go. Give it a few goes, not just one. Anybody can do something once, you know, with a bit of luck. If you can do this constantly and do things getting harder and harder and harder, then that will build your body of confidence up. And we're starting pretty easy. There's nothing hard I've got here. Um, but, you know, hopefully things will, you know, well, don't struggle. Things will get harder for me through the week. Put knife on the right way around, it'd help. And uh, so, let's crack on. And what I'll do is lower this down so you can actually see what I'm doing here. There we go. Hopefully, I will. This bloody little thing will work. Right then, here we go. Now, my knees won't like this concrete, but 
I'm suffering in the name of entertainment. Right, first thing we have, my knife, and we have a gas cooker. There we are, move the other things out of the way, don't let them blow up. What would I expect to be a relatively simple? Why carry a ferro rod? Quite simple. Will it do lots and lots of different things? Turn the gas on. No. We have fire. If you're off camping somewhere, are you doing anything? Doesn't run out, doesn't you know, won't get wet. You know, unless you lose it, you've always got a means of lighting your cooker. If the piezo goes in your cooker, it will always work. And again, like I said, I'm going to be doing this more than once, as simple as it is. It's all about building confidence. So yes, it will light a gas cooker. Do you cook on mess? Well, does it light mess? Because if you get it in the oh, there we are, yes, if you get it in the hole instead of missing the pot, it lights mess straight away. And then again. There we go. Not all gonna be that simple, don't worry. So yes, the ferro rod will light mess. And again, I miss the first two or three times. What's it like when you're cold, or you're tired, or you're struggling to do things? Next we have a piece of um, like wax paper thing. These are bits, and I'm only using a tiny bit because I've only got bits left that I brought over from the UK here, but uh, can't seem to get this over here. But I'm looking for something similar. But again, different technique. This time, rather than because I'm up in the air and try to throw sparks, I want my sparks to land in a specific spot, so a different technique I'm using. Oh, certainly glowing. Oh, there we go. And she's off. Yeah. So again, you've got to think, it's all well and good sit me sitting here going, oh yeah, I can do that, I can do that. I've done it before, I've done it lots of times in the past. But it's getting that technique right, because it's, you know, if you're cold, you know, if it can be quite difficult. Just something a little bit different. When was the last time, although you've seen it on telly loads of time, when was the last time you actually tried to light a piece of rubber to light a fire? How big can it be? How thick can it be? How easy is it? Lighter, big lighter. Pretty damn easy. As long as you're using, you know, a fairly small piece. So even if you want to light a big piece of rubber, if you've got a good fire going, trim one end down to a small piece and it will light quite easily. Next thing, a little wet fire tinder. Should be absolutely a doddle. But there is a little trick to these. You can't just throw sparks on this. It's a bit like the, uh, a bit like the uh, fuel blocks, the, uh, I can't think of the name of them at the minute. But the trick with these is use your knife and just sort of like break the top up so you've got lots of little bits. And there's a little pile of finer pieces at the top. Now hopefully that will take a spark. There we go. Oops, push that into film. There we go. Turn that off, because I'll, I'll flip that off, because I can use it again. I keep practicing with that. Something with the ferro rod. The reason you need to watch every day a video on fire lighting, not just ferro rods, different techniques for lighting tinder. The reason for that is when you get a ferro rod, you'll start to see some of them, like short, firm, strong. It's not speed, it's good, firm, a good, strong drag. Others like a faster motion. It depends often on how hard they are. You need to practice, you need to do this with your own ferro rod so you find out what works when you get out there. If you don't, you'll get out and think, oh, this is crap, it doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work, you're just not using the right technique. And there's lots of techniques for using a ferro rod. And again, I've used the small, yeah, nice little thumb against the blade, flicking it out to throw the sparks more. Mm -hmm. And there's other techniques I'll be practicing through the week. So that's let all these things up to press. <laughs> the cheap old Yorkshire fire lighter. Here we have a piece of rag, a bit of cotton cloth, soaked in petrol, stuck in a jar. 
All you actually need is lots of little strips of cloth and just enough petrol to soak them. You don't really want to, you know, you don't flood the jar and fill the jar with petrol. You just have enough just so the cloths are damp. If you've got too much, you'll end up setting fire to yourself. Now, I'm going to use a match for this simply because the correct technique for using a match is you hold it at the top with your fingers and then you put the other finger near the bottom and you flick it off the base. If you do what most people do, which is hold it and put your finger here, when you're cold or tired or hungry or you're rushing, the tendency is to do press too much and you break the match. And straighten that one out. If you put your finger near the end and lift it as it lights, but you flick, it will light. Then the idea, put it into your cupped hands, facing towards your body. That way any breeze comes up, it will push the flame along. And then all we do is touch the cloth. So here we are guys, last but not least, uh, I've got some feather sticks here. This is why I told you to save your feather sticks from the beginning of the week, so we can give these a bit of a try, we can see how they go. Um, got the old match technique, because these are definitely not ultra fine. Um, I have some lance wood, which is a wood I've never used before. Um, looks like some kind of cedar. And I'm not too sure, I still haven't quite worked out that, but I think it might be one of the cedars or... Um, I'll try to think of the name, I'll come in a minute. So here we go, let's start off. Alright, anyway, it might not have been a wonderful feather stick, but it's certainly good enough to get going with one match. So like I say, it might not have been a, a beautiful picture of feather sticking technique, but it just shows you don't necessarily have to do it ultra fine to get yourself a fire going if you have other techniques there. So the uh, really fine stuff and the you know the using the ferrule rod for lighting the curls, that'll hopefully come a bit later in the week. Anyway, that's that one. So, you know, I've got an idea, a bit, bit of confidence building. I know that I don't have to have something ultra, ultra fine like you see on the telly. Lit first time, one match. So anyway, I'm going to try the lancewood now. Because they have, this will be a first time with this one. I'm going to try and let's get you down there actually because I can. That breeze has bloody got up. Right, am I here? Yep. Okay, so. Now this wood is definitely not seasoned, and all it's been is it's been dried for a few days since I made the feather sticks out of it. So that actually, um, I think as far as lance wood goes, I think we can safely say it's a burner. Like I say, that definitely wasn't dried. That was uh, actually a little bit green when I was carving it, so just a few days drying. So anything a bit of nice dry standing dead wood should do very nicely. Put that out of my way. Try not to burn my bun on it. And the last one. Out the way. And this must have been a bit later on in the week because it's definitely got some tighter curls in there, so there shouldn't be any problem with this one. And it's a macrocarpa. There we are. I knew I'd remember the name. Eventually, this is a macrocarpa. So I think it's a cedar, something along the lines of a cedar. But uh, anyway, we'll see how this one goes. Well, what the hell? About two and a half seconds, and she was on on her way. The little curls, like the bigger curls, definitely. There we go, a little bundle of those should have a fire going nicely. So it's all, like I say, all about different things that you're learning each time at the minute. Learning, uh, relearning old techniques and uh, teaching myself some of the uh, new timbers. So anyway, that good, day one down, let's see what I can find for tomorrow. Hi guys, day two, um, just in case you can't hear me. Okay, so some stuff very, very similar to yesterday. Again, it's honing those skills, not just constantly, oh, I've done it once, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna, so it's like, you know, the gas cooker. Um, can I get my technique right? Um, can I use slightly different things? This time I'm using my little uh, fire striker that I'm uh, making. Basically, it's um, it's hard hardened and tempered. Um, I've got a scraper on one side, so I'll be using that a bit later on with other things through the week. And then also it can actually be used as a fire steel just for, scraping down the rod or obviously scraping a ferrocerium rod but uh, gas cooker first time Oop. there we go wind blew it out but first time both times again technique improving okay. 
next one. Again, same thing here, but this time into the mess again. I remember yesterday, I had to get the sparks right into the hole. No good just spraying them all over, they've got to get into that hole. It's missed. Oh, there we go. Second time. Right into that hole. Oh, I went that time, but... There we go. Yep, she's off. So it definitely helps to have a bit of the uh, bit of the mets around the edge. And there's one of the big things with mets is that you can't really see it burning. But I'll put... so that's something you've got to be careful of when you're topping your mets up. Is uh, just to not just think it's out, but to make sure it's out because you can't actually see it burning. In, unless you've got, you know, in, in bright light you can't see the meth burn, it's quite difficult. So you go and uh, top your meth burner up and your fuel bottle sets on light in your face. So, there you are, just to show you that little, little bit of a tip there. Just in case you haven't used them before. I'll move that aside, let that cool down before I put the lid on because of the little plastic gasket. Don't forget you've got a plastic gasket and then go sticking that onto a hot stove. I've done that before as well, you've got to buy a new gasket. Okay. Here we are to the, uh, again, the little fire starter we know works really well. Bring that up a little bit, right there. Oh, no, knocked it over. Break it up a little bit in the middle, do that again. Yeah, don't rush, get it right the first time. Slightly different technique. <laughs> I seem to be getting sparks everywhere but where I bloody want them. Thinking that technique wasn't working too well for me. Oh, there she goes. That's better. So again, trying different techniques. That way I was trying to pull the, the rod away and leave the striker where it was. That didn't work too well for me. So I'll just move that out of the way. Put it out. <coughs> Not on that particular occasion anyway. Um, something I want to try, wanted to try for a while, um, hexamine blocks. These can be a bugger to light even with a match, but I've never tried crumbling a pile of the hexamine off and giving it a try. So I've never actually tried this, so again, it's something new, something I've not tried before. I've always thought if I haven't got matches and a lighter with me, I can't light my hexamine, but I've scraped some off. Right there. So here we are, so I've got a bit of a scraping of one of the hexamine blocks. This time I'm going to try planting the steel because I want the sparks to go right. So I'm going to plant the steel down and then just plant some... Oop. So there we are, another first. First time I've lit my uh, meth stove yesterday with a ferrocene rod. Today, first time I've written a he lit a hexamine block. Result, good stuff. Very pleased. Did this yesterday, I don't think I need to do too much today. This was a bit on the easy side, really, but a little bit of uh, petrol rag. Great little dirt cheap fire starter. Penny of, a penny of bloody petrol and a couple of torn up rags. A bit of a spark. Move well, that away from my cookers. Well, they've all gone up. Right now, just the last one today, and um, I'm going to give it to the side is the uh, I've got a feather stick. And I've got some reasonable little curls in there, but I don't think they're anywhere near good enough to light. But I'll give it a little go. But if it doesn't go, I'm just going to light it with the. Uh, just going to get it going with a. match anyway, just for practicing the, the curls, because I think I need to do some more of these through the week to get my practice up. And I'll do some uh, tight ones with the, try and go for the tighter curls, that will actually, I know, will work with the, with the rod. Oh, in fact, there we go. My first feather stick, lit with a ferro rod in quite some time so it did work so even that which i didn't think was that good 
good a good technique with your ferro rod and she's burned away i'll put that away before i smoke all the light up on the bloody fire so good result hexamine gas well hexamine hexamine mess gas wet fire starters the uh feather sticks which i know will light with my uh with the matches and things like that so i haven't really I haven't even touched the match and the lighter tonight. Everything's actually worked how I wanted it to, so... Anyway... There we go. Second day. Well, actually my third day, but... Second day of working. Very pleased. Catch you tomorrow. Well, hi there guys. Um, day... Uh, four I think day four but on obviously day three of the practice because I missed today so um, same thing again practice day, day that's the whole point of this do it do it do it yeah and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do today just do a bit and then uh, once I've uh, I'm gonna start mixing it up again for the next couple of days do some different stuff as I've done well as I've done already like tried out the, um, the hexamine and the other and the little fire block and things like that so it is trying different things out um, each time, but I'm trying to make it a little bit more difficult as I go along. So anyway, we'll start with the easy stuff, but this time, change the knife. Swap into my uh, bush knife. So again, it's just something that bit different each time. And we'll start with the gas. First time, that's what I'm aiming for. First time. what I'm aiming for. Improvements every day. Mess. This will be fun with this sunlight shining. I don't see anything. But here we go. Into the right to the middle. First time. Nope. Don't know if you can see that guys but she's going first time. Out. Yep, yep. Off she goes again. A bit around the outside, still burning. Oh, I've got my strap sticking to it. Cool, that was a bit warm. And off she goes again. Happy with that. That's a couple. Alright. Make up this little bit of a. Oh. I don't know if she's smoking or burning. I think she's just smoking. Thanks. Simple thing like the different length of the knife um, is making the whole, completely different technique required. Again, learning again, learning. So I said, don't just learn one particular way. Learn different lots, lots of different ways of doing something. There we go. Fire paper. Again, I'm going to probably try and just rough this up a little bit as well. Smooth. In this one, I find this better. First time roughed up. Pull that out of the way. I can use that again. Hold on. She went out. Not meant to go out. There we go. Oh, there she goes. Technique again, that's what it's all about. Right, so 
I'm looking at here now. Okay. One, Something a bit different this time. And this was just, just a bit of an example. When I said last week about saving things. Here we have my little hobo set up. My little hobo multi-purpose stove. I can burn anything in there from hexes, mess burners, fire, everything. Cost a couple of dollars. But we have a bag full of all the little chippings that fell off when I was making my perfect feather sticks. I can put that in there. I'm giving a little bit of a little bit of wind protection. Where's the wind coming from? From there. And here we have a match. And there. I'll have to do this quickly because it's going to get hot. We have fire. One quick match. All the little chippings that came off. Not on a feather stick. Not perfect. Not looking awesome. One match. Two seconds. Off they went. That out of the way. Burning like mad. So it just shows. You know, don't get don't get too het up about making the perfect feather stick. I mean, you've got the thin shavings. That's what you're after. The thin shavings. So what have I got? Oh, it's on fire. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And what am I going to do? Oh, that's what. That's what I was going to do. The old. Um, this wasn't around much a few years ago when I was doing my bushcrafting, but this is something that seems to be quite common on uh, YouTube, and it's fluff from the uh, trouble dryer mixed with a bit of uh, Vaseline or petroleum jelly. So um, I've done a couple of experiments on this, I already know it works, um, but I've used a match, so I'm going to try it with the ferro rod. I know it works with the match because I've tried it, because I was trying to experiment with how much of the uh, petroleum jelly I needed to put on. So give a bit of this and see if it will take a spark. This, to be honest, looks like it's half full of Ben's bloody fur. And stop eating my sticks. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, let's see, try. Oh, right. So there we are. Learned something else. Yes, it definitely works. I've got, I've got an idea. The amount of uh, petroleum jelly I found works seems to work well is like a, a really good smearing so not a solid clump but so it actually the whole thing just feels greasy and slimy and and it certainly burns like that it was only a tiny bit there and it certainly a couple of sparks and off she goes so virtually free fire lighting and there we go so I'm pleased with that so that was a first it's the first time I've done any fire lighting with my uh, bush knife it's my Bushman's model. I'm onto mod actually I'm onto well, model three now. So I've got a, the one I'm doing at the moment now has a higher grind, uh, approximately 40 degree bevel for strength. So it's multi-purpose. Um, can obviously be a lot lower. That sort of maybe 35. You know, 30, 35. If somebody was wanting a really sharp edge more than anything, but to handle bone and various you know heavy work, I'm aiming to put a 40 degree secondary bevel on, about three quarter high grind. And I've also altered the shape of the handle, so it's a little bit. It's not as um, acute. And it's just a little bit more, a little more like that, a little bit more rounded and a bit more, just that little bit smoother around, you know, on, on the finger grooves. But uh, that'll come out eventually when I eventually get around to uh, finishing it off, and I'll show you that then. Just as a quick aside, something I, I did find, I, I did this from years ago. If you're having any problems with your ferro rods, one of these little, it's called a speedy sharp. And they're like a little carbide sharpener that they sell in a lot of um, garden centres and things, and they're designed for lawnmower blades and all that kind of stuff. But basically, what you've got is a really good sharp piece of, car of uh, carbide, which is really, really hard, and it absolutely throws awesome sparks. It absolutely rips lumps off your ferro rod, which at the end of the day is exactly what you want. You can see that, uh, hopefully, with the light, that this it absolutely throws piles of sparks. Very easy to use. If you have any problems, possibly have a look at something like that, they're not very big. It does come as a secondary knife sharpener, it's not ideal, you've got to be really, really careful with them. I'm going to do a video on that as well, um, but yeah, it should work. So there you go guys, with that, I'll catch you on tomorrow's. Now, right, guys, uh, we are what is a sort of basically day five. Um, so we have been uh, 
like I said, predominantly a lot of this is weak. I've, you know, I've got to stress something I thought yesterday. Actually, I forgot to say was don't forget this isn't this week isn't about fire lighting. This is is this part one. This is um, this is getting something to take a spark or take a flame. So this is just actually part one. So it's not a case of then you know as I as I go on, I get a bit more when I'm wandering around. I'm going to start collecting my uh, tinder bundles and things, so then I can take it to the next stage, which is then um, you know for obviously for things that have uh, got a coal in them, the tinder bundles is the next stage or you know doing the feather sticks fine and getting them more reliable and things like that so like i said again this is only week two and we're on you know i'm using this as a way to make myself really hone basic skills and get those basic skills really really working for me so uh and thankfully the sun's holding up and uh so anyway i'll crack on so the first thing i have here and i don't know i've got these little um i don't actually know what they're made of they're supposed to be i think like wax impregnated little buds of things you get them in fire lighting kits and emergency kits and all sorts and I've had bits of these knocking around for donkey's years but I said you know I've never actually lit a fire with one of these I know years ago I had made sure that I know they work I've had you know I have used them years ago but I just thought well I've got a few of these lying around that I never use I'll dig that out and throw a spark on it so here we go fire bloody uh, breeze is getting up today it's worse than yesterday see hopefully that uh, did take very very easily oops mm -hmm. burning for a while as well it's not been too bad it's certainly lasting long enough to certainly get even um, that should get even a pretty poorly made feather stick burning should that that's burning actually lasting a lot longer than I expected it to well, I'll knock that off and move on to the next one or else I'm going to be, uh, these films are going to be too blooming long to watch. So that's one. The next thing, something I've never done before, is uh, lit a candle with the ferro rod. And that's supposed to be uh, quite a difficult thing to do, but I'll give it a little go. Um, might take a day or two, might take a go or two, but I'll give it a little go. I've got a couple of other little bits to have a look at, but I'll give this one a go. Now then, I'm not mistaken, you have to do something. Oh, I'll turn it the other way then, it's not in my way. Something like this, I believe. Get that onto there. Well, it's definitely blowing. burnt into flames but as you can see it's uh, smoking and uh, disappearing rapidly so I'm not too sure what, what you've got to just I don't know what I've got to do with that might be a, something I've got to say more practice needed because I wonder if um, like I'm doing there getting some of that wax onto it might help melting some wax on there see if the wax will take Well, it did. I had a flame for a minute there, and that was definitely the wax that was burning. So that might be a bit of a clue to making it work. Now that the wind might be a bit strong, it's just not getting taken taking hold. <laughs> First time ever! Oh shit, it blew out. Poo. That's not a lot of good, is it, if it doesn't keep lit? 
thought was on the right lines. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, it's not just the wick, get the wax on it. Wet the wax to melt, get the wax on it, and it was the wax that lit and then lit the wick. The wick just smoldered and burnt away like an ember. <laughs> right, that's that one. A couple more, a few days of nice sunshine here. Right, really quick it, I'm just going to go right quick with this one again, just because I've only used it once before. Nope, she doesn't. Oh, yes, she does. Don't give in. Keep it going. Keep going. Don't give in. There we go. Right. Now, whoops, oh, that candle's still got it. It's molded. There we go. Now, what else for today? So, I'm actually pretty quick. Actually, while the sun's out, here's a quick hit. I've uh, had this for a while now and I've used it once or twice and uh, never actually got anywhere with it but I've made some char cloth so what I thought was I'd give it a try with the char cloth it didn't seem to work very well even getting a, just even getting a you know um, a coal with it with the little like this little cone thing that came with it um, and the bits of other stuff didn't seem to work very well, but I thought, oh, I wonder if we have char cloth now. Then I've got to get this technique right because I've not. Um, that's the sun. Ah, there we are. You find the sun on the stem, and then just walk it up to whatever it is where you know where you're wanting to put it. Bloody hell! I started smoking virtually as soon as I put the, uh, virtually as soon as I got the uh, the light on it. Oh, that's glowing like mad. Absolutely glowing like mad. Uh, yeah, a few seconds. A few seconds and there's your ember. Literally a few seconds. Oh, you know it. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> Bloody hell, I didn't think that would be that quick. I've been out before now for ages trying to get that concentrated on and get the little, you get like a little funny little cone that you're forced to be able to get a, an ember off. That char cloth, well, that was smoking within literally two, three seconds of the light hitting it. And I mean, it's what now? It's uh, half five at night, so you know we're well over the well over the yard arm, and uh, pretty awesome that really. So, what I'll do tomorrow? I might have another candle practice, possibly a flint and steel. I've got some. Uh, um, some resin I want to try, some cowrie resin I've never tried before. So I think I'll keep that. I've done, that's my little bits for today. I don't want to make it onerous, that's the whole point of this is, te uh, you know, 10 or 15 to 30 minute max sort of like bits of practice that people can do every day, keep it up, keeping it up, which is what I'm trying to do. And not turn it into like an hour, an hour and a half at a time or anything like that, although I know the, the video is. Um, and I'll try and cut this down as much as I can as I do, but uh, it's just doing that little bit every day. So with that, I will catch you tomorrow, my last day. And what I'm going to be doing, actually, is I'm going to be cutting the films down. I'm saying this now, I should say it at the end. But I'm going to be doing six rather than the seven because I just find I, by the time I've met the film on the seventh day and then it comes down to editing them all, putting them all together, getting them onto the computer, uploading them onto you, it's just taking so long. So I'm going to leave the Sunday. So I'm going to be doing the Monday. I'll do like the, the Monday to Saturday practice. And then the Sunday gives me that day then for um, editing all the videos and putting them on and hopefully not rushing and maybe doing a better job. So with that, I'll catch you tomorrow, guys. Hi there guys, here we are, um, day six, last day of the practice. Um, here I am down in uh, Roto Vegas with the most beloved, but you know, like I say, it's, I had to bring a little, little, my little um, foraging bag of bits and pieces, but it's allowed me to set myself up and do a bit of, uh, you know, a bit more fire lighting. So I've just spent 10 minutes or so setting myself up, I'm gonna film this, then hopefully put all the vids together and get them out um, probably every tomorrow night, the Sunday night. Um, so anyway, I will uh, I will crack on, because uh, they get a bit long if I don't, and. Uh, 
talk as I'm going through. So I'm going to set you down here. Hopefully I've got this set up right. Yep. So the first thing I'm doing here is um, feather stick again, um, the fine one, obviously for the. Uh, I've been trying this with the, both with my bushcraft knife. And I'm going to carry on with my neck knife. So a bit of both, um, and it's just getting those little fine curls. So practice for getting the little fine curls that will light with a spark. This is my first one. So some of this might take a bit longer than a lot of the other things. So that's why I'm sort of like wanting to crack on a little bit. You know, as, as I said, the one thing I am finding is that if you're using the belly on the knife, so you've got a bit of a curl there, you're definitely able to get the finer curls. The, the, the little ringlets form much easier when you've got a bit of belly that you're working to, rather than just um, the flat of the knife. And that's what hopefully will give me this nice little bed here. And obviously with a nice bit of a curve, nice bit of belly on there, it's forming up these ringlets lovely. At the end of the day, this is, as I've read, and it's right, there's as much pressure going that way as there is that way, especially if you're nice sharp. And that's what gives you those little ringlets. Nice little tight bed. Hopefully enough to, like I say, take that spark. So I've got a nice tight little bed here. Hopefully that will be enough for the, uh, to take a spark. So we'll give that a go. There we go. Get the stick nice and firm. Right, and this one I'm going to try and plant the stick right inside. And uh, see if we can get these uh, sparks to take. And the stick won't sit still. That's going to fall on it. So I think we can say that was a success. Out to the side. And a couple of little things I'm doing here. One is something I'd, I've often seen about. And I've never actually used wire wool. So here we are, just a piece of wire wool. And although I know it's not the midst of a flame, but there we go. In spark. Bloody hell, that's hot. So anyway, there's your... Uh, that will definitely give you your coal. That's one hell of a coal to get your fire going. Hopefully you can see that because it's burning my bloody fingers. So that's the result. Now something else I've also um, done a bit, bit of, uh, again, that, the research I was saying you needed to do each day. Just a little bit of research, a little bit of an article. And um, so... Uh, Survival Russia, I think it was, the chap was in it. And he was saying, rather than... The, the normal way they tell you to use magnesium filings off the mag I've got a little magnesium block. I have a shop around, you can get these pretty cheap, and I think they're all pretty consistent, just depends on the packaging. Um, but the way he recommends to use that is rather than just putting a pile, which is if you see I've scraped a pile off here, simply with the back of my knife, scrape them into my uh, the tin I use for making my uh, char cloth, and obviously that just as you're doing it, it just lets you catch them. They're only very light, stops them from blowing away. But what he recommends you do is rather than just putting one pile like it shows you on even on the packaging where you get like a little dime sized pile and that, it says get your tinder, whatever it is you're wanting to light, and spread them out and mix them in. And that way, instead of getting one intense burn, you get a much longer or intense burn. So, anyway, hopefully, you can see this. I'll put this up here. Yep, let's see what happens. I think it's pretty safe to say that was quite an intense burn and lasted for a lot longer than the one flash you would have got if you'd have just put them in one pile. So, 
Awesome. Thanks for that, Survival Russia. Great tip there. Imagine that in a little bed of, uh, well, anything really. Even the bloody tin's hot. So, good one. Learnt something else. I'll keep all my rubbish together and then I can tidy, tidy, oh god, then I can tidy up. Right, next one. Another go with the candle. Remember what I said about keeping on trying things? So this isn't a new one. Just want another go with the candle. Um, a bit light off that. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, let's look. There we go, get that one right onto that tip there. And this time I'll use the knife rather than the carbide sharpener. Bring some more firm. Oh, I'm, setting, I'm setting the grass on fire. Oh. Hmm. Not quite enough exposure. Just doing a little bit out, but. I'm just scraping a bit of the uh, wax away to give me a slightly longer because that's actually lit twice but then gone out and I want this lit because I need to try something else as well and this takes some of the other techniques I was using lots and lots, lots of sparks in one spot this time I'm going to really Close space, so I'm using this tech, different, completely different technique. Again, something you'll have learnt all week if you've been watching the different videos. bit of persistence and there she goes right now that is going to tie into my next one this is cowrie resin probably the closest thing I can find to pine over here so I collected some of this off a tree ages ago just never really got around to playing with it so the first one which I know will like so one thing I did do was uh, tried it with a flame so there we go that however as I said keep learning keep trying new things so what I thought I would do today and I'm going to use this tin now if it's cooled down a bit and what I wanted to do was to try get a load of flakes Easy when everything's bouncing around, but I learn something else. Let's see if the uh, cowry will light from a spark. go. Fire in the New Zealand bush from cowrie resin. So my next step with that is what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to uh, make my fuzz sticks. You can't buy them over here because importing wood's very difficult and things but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as you can do when you make resin sticks is I'm going to heat some, uh, collect some more resin, warm that up and soak it in sticks so I'll show you that at some point if that makes um, really good homemade feather sticks for, for over here. So we will soon find out. 
and there we go so another result see all these things you read about and try and just I just stick to this you know you tend to stick to the same things again and again sometimes giving something a bit of a go be really rewarding that last thing I haven't done for a long time my homemade flint homemade chai cloth Hold this up like that not much of this left I'm gonna to have to find something else to uh, use as a striker for the for the steel at this rate but anyway here we go we'll give this a bit of a try She goes. Result, the jar cloth works. My fire lighting implement, striker, scraper, everything else works. It scraped things up, it scraped ferro, everything. Anyway, awesome. So, quite a lot of positives that week, really. It's just great, get out there doing stuff, give it a bit of a go, give it, don't be scared of it. And, uh, you know, see what it's because often the, the thing is, it, it, whilst I've had a lot of successes this week, the, there's a lot of stuff not necessarily been easy. It's not just been one, oh, a couple of strikes like you see on the telly and they'll they get the rod and everything out. <coughs> oh, fire goes. <coughs> Bollocks. The Dutch Army outtakes have had to get there. But a bit of practice makes perfect. Proper preparation and practice prevents piss poor performance. With that, thanks very much, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this week. Don't forget to subscribe. Another one coming out next week. Oh, that reminds me. Next week you need um, probably about a couple of metres of cord. Paracord will do. Um, or any string you've got. Anything really. Paracord's pretty good to take the knots out of. Gives you a hint at what I'm going to be doing next week. Knots with a twist. But uh, anyway, this week, get on with your practice. All get, just getting that flame going. As many different ways as you can think of. Every day, watch a video. Read an article. Just one. Ten minutes. So with so like 15 you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes out giving the practice, 10 minutes watching, it's half an hour a day. Like I said before, it's the way to build skills. It's easy to fit in. It's not, you know, it's not going to take over your life. And then the next time you're out in the bush, you're ready to get going. <laughs> That's the cunning plan. So anyway, with that, I'll sign off and uh, get out in your garden doing it. <laughs>